What's up everyone, Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids and today we're taking a look at a product from Fremont Knives. This is the Farson Hatchet. And the way I got a hold of this was actually, I was at Blade Show this past year, walking around meeting a bunch of different people, getting to know some folks, connected with some people I had seen before. And uh, David from Ultimate Survival Tips, who's a friend of mine, int introduced me to the folks from Fremont Knives. They ended up passing on one of these for review, in addition to that neck knife that uh, Fremont Knives makes. And I reviewed that one already on my channel. You can check that one out. But uh, this is a really innovative uh, tool, survival tool, knife, whatever you want to call it. And it's kind of an expansion of their original Farson survival tool. And I'll, I'll show that in a moment. I have one of those here as well. But this is a, a really unique way to think about using utilizing a bladed item for a wide variety of tasks. So let's uh, bring in the original Farson survival tool, show you that, then I'll give you some specs on the Farson hatchet and we'll move forward talking about that and using it. Okay, so what you're looking at here is the Farson hatchet and then the Farson survival tool up above it. The main thing to note about the Farson tool and the hatchet is that you have a blade all the way around here and all the way around here as well. So that's definitely unique compared to a lot of other survival items, survival knives, whatever it might be out there. Now, the Farson survival tool, uh, they got this idea from a tool that they found in the Great Red Desert of Farson, Wyoming. And essentially it was, it looked like a, a stone uh, Native American tool that didn't have this opening in the middle, but it was a stone that had this blade like so, or a, a bladed edge like so. And so you could skin with it, you could cut with it, you could do tons of different things with it. And they thought, what a great concept for a tool. And so they said, hey, let's make that out of metal. Let's add some, uh, you know, some modern day advantages to it. And this thing has been a huge seller. And so from there, they noticed that a lot of people were actually putting, you know, taking a stick basically and tying it on here and making a small hatchet out of it. So they said, well, let's do that. And that's how we have the Farson hatchet now. Let me give you some of the specs here on the Farson hatchet. Your weight is 9.6 ounces. Your length is 9.5 inches. Your cutting edge is 5.5 inches. It does have a titanium nitride coating. The material is 1095 carbon steel. Your thickness is 0.25 inches and your width is three inches. It also does come with a sheath and I'll show you that in a moment. And as you can see, it's also wrapped in paracord here. Here's a look at the hatchet in the sheath, and I will let you know that there is a plastic insert inside the sheath. So you have this nylon on the outside and then this plastic inside so that your bladed edge is not going to be tearing up the nylon sheath. Flipping it over to the back side, you can see that there is a belt loop here. So if you want to actually attach this to your belt and walk around with it on your, uh, your hip there, you can certainly do so. So let's talk about utilizing the Farson hatchet. There's actually a lot of different ways you can hold it to have it be most effective for the various uses. As you can see here, there is some nice jimping on the top. So you can you know, hold on to your paracord there. I'll just get the tail end out of the way there. Hold on to it like so if you want to do some chopping or cutting. You can also put your finger in there and that allows you to do a little bit more kind of finer detail work if you want to. The Farson survival tool originally was essentially this without a handle. So you can put your entire hand in like this and do cutting. And don't forget that this edge, this is a bladed edge and also under here is a bladed edge. So you have a lot of cutting power, a lot of uh, blade when it comes to actually using this knife. They uh, uh, if you check out some reviews on this, and actually even the folks over at Fremont will tell you that you can use the survival tool and the hatchet both, uh, you know, if you want to just do work in the kitchen, you can certainly hold this with your hand inside that loop and cut chicken, cut vegetables, cut fruit, whatever it might be. They also uh, recommend to use this for batoning, and they actually recommend that you use this edge and hammer this way as opposed to using this edge. I'll show you that out in the field uh, in not too long, but just there you can see there's a wide variety of different uses for this very creative, very uh, innovative tool. One other thing I wanted to mention is that I find Fremont knives to be very attentive to their users. And you can see this by just the information that they sent to you with the Fremont hatchet. They give you lots of information about safety warnings, how to, how to maintain the blade, how to sharpen the blade. I mean, that's something a lot of companies don't bother. They basically say, be careful with the knife. These guys talk about a lot of different things. They talk down here below, you can't see it, but I'll show you in a second here. Here's the limited lifetime warranty and information on that, all their contact information. You know, oftentimes it's basically, uh, don't hurt yourself with this knife, and if you do, don't sue us. That's what a lot of people say. I just think these guys are very thoughtful as they're putting tools together, as they're putting knives together. Uh, they're really, caring about the user and caring about the product that they're producing.
All right, we're out in the field now. We're going to do some work with the Farson hatchet. We'll do some chopping, some batoning, some fine work, and we'll see how this item holds up and what we think about it. First thing we'll do here is some chopping. This is a pretty large tree. I wouldn't try to take this whole thing down with the Farson hatchet, but let's just see how it does cutting into the wood, how it feels to hold it, and uh, just use it in general. Here's what the cutting actually looks like. The first thing I'll tell you is that when you do grab onto the hatchet, if you're taking huge swings, you definitely want to be wearing gloves because that is quite aggressive jimping. Uh, it does give you a good solid grip on it, but if you're just kind of lackadaisically swinging this thing, it's probably going to end up uh, beating up your thumb quite a bit. Now, once again, I wouldn't use the Farson hatchet to try to cut through this entire tree. It's probably eight inches, you know, the, uh, the diameter of this thing. So. Uh, I just want to show you what the actual cutting process looked like using the Farson hatchet and it definitely does the job. One of the really nice things is because you have blade the whole way around, even if you're not hitting at the perfect perfect angle, you're still going to be getting blade hitting against the uh, hitting against the tree. So, you know, if you end up hitting this way a little bit too much, there's still blade there. And if you hit down low, the blade ends right about here. Right, we're going to do some more chopping now and this will be a little bit more kind of detailed chopping. We're going to make a uh, a point on this so if we were making a snare or a fishing gig maybe a tent stake something like that here's how we could use the uh, farson hatchet to do so And here's a close-up of that work. You probably saw as I was chopping it, it's almost like the hatchet wants to turn this into a feather stick. It just gets these little shavings to pop up like you can see right there. So let's actually give it a try and uh, see if we can do some fine work now. Now, as I mentioned before, there are lots of different ways you can grip this. You can actually hold it up like this. So make sure not to put your thumb on this side since that's still a blade. You can certainly hold it like a hatchet as I've been holding it uh, during this uh, outdoor part of the review. You can also hold it like this, which I find the best way when you want to actually do some of this finer detail work. It just seems to lend itself to uh, that type of grip. So here we, here we go with the, just getting some shavings, maybe forming a feather stick. Location. Just for kicks, we're going to actually turn this over and let me try to do it coming down like this now using the top top portion of the blade. That's also quite easy to do with this Farson hatchet. Here's a look at our end result, this lower portion down here with the longer part of the blade and then using the top portion of the blade. So it's definitely going to be really good on that fine detail work. We'll do a little bit more chopping here. All right, we're going to try some batoning now. As you can see, batoning is no problem for the 
Farson hatchet. I will tell you one thing compared to the Farson blade because of the length of your the spine of your uh, where your blade is and then the length of the handle it does make batoning easier than using just the Farson tool that it's you know that's about this long end to end the Farson tool and so it's just hard when you get if you get into a piece of wood that's you know this wide and then your tool is this long you've just got this tiny bit at both edges whereas with the hatchet you have you know quite a bit of length end to end it just makes it easier in the batoning process. Now one thing you should know is that the folks over at Fremont Knives have mentioned you can use the Farson hatchet vertically as essentially a wedge when you're splitting larger logs. I definitely want to say that you want to use this for this technique for larger logs. If you're trying to split something that's, you know, say that around, unless it's wedged in between two other sticks very firmly, uh, as you're hitting it, it's going to basically topple left, topple right, topple left, topple right. The advantage of using this style um, with a log that's big around and that can actually stand is that you've got more distance. It's really going much further into the log to split it apart as opposed to when you do it this way, you've only got this much. When you do it this way, you can see you have quite a bit more. So that's something that you can also know as a possible use. I found that when I'm using this on smaller uh, logs out in the woods, you know, just to do some basic batoning to get some good firewood, uh, it's much easier to just use it like this. All right, let's wrap up talking about the Farson hatchet. Let me talk about two of the things you should probably know as maybe downsides, and then really talk about some of the positives as well. The first thing is that on the Farson tool, at one of these edges, you actually have more of a tip, more of a point. On this Farson hatchet, there is no real tip. So if you're someone who uses the tip of a knife to pierce into things a lot when you're out in the woods, then this might not be the tool for you. The other thing I'll mention is that even though it's called a hatchet, you're not going to be downing any large trees with this. I would say this is designed for medium to smaller work when it comes to chopping and actually using or leveraging the fact that it has a handle. Now those are the two real downsides. The upsides I think are very significant. So it offers a lot of versatility. As you saw, I was able to use this edge, I was able to use this edge as well to do some of that fine work. Batoning is much easier uh, with this than using just the Farson tool because of the length of the handle as well. The fact that you have paracord here that adds in another advantage if you're in a wilderness survival or a camping situation, that becomes another resource. Another thing I like about the Farson hatchet is this cutout here. Just allows you to get your hand in there and you get some, some styles and techniques as far as cutting, slicing, whatever it might be that you can't do with your average knife just because of you know being able to get your hand inside when it's pretty much almost surrounded by a blade. Now some people might counter, well yeah, you move this entire section and there's no metal there, so you have structural integrity issues. I can understand that. However, I think if you're using this tool properly, that's not going to be an issue. If you're using it in such a way that you're dealing with structural integrity, you're probably just overusing it or using it too aggressively, you know, trying to chop down a tree that's three feet across. That's not what this is designed for. So as I said, my opinion, medium to smaller or lighter use would be what the Farson hatchet is best used for. As I often say, I love innovation. I love when people think outside the box, and I think Fremont Knives with this, you can see they are very much thinking outside the box. I've got a link down below if you want to purchase one of them, and if you could do so using the link that I've posted, that'll actually help support Everyday Tactical Vids and get you this tool or also the Farson tool as well. Thanks so much for checking out the review. Please subscribe to us here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, check us out on Instagram and Tumblr. Take care.